Welcome to iOS 12. So today we're going to bring you the, the new patch notes for Leisure Run Terra. So on the previous patch, uh, they didn't do no balance. It was only about skins. And if you pay attention on Reddit about the game, everyone was complaining about skins for because of the price, because it was too expensive. So it showed that uh, they all already are after the money releasing skins and go out after the money only because the game is already bleeding and they only care about money so it's like it was a month without like good balancing because they announced like uh, how it was going to be in terms of balance it was like uh, a patch without nothing well like cosmetics right then a patch with balancing then a patch with again only with cosmetics like that uh, but during the previous month it was like it, it had the anniversary, anniversary, right? So it was only about cosmetics. They had the patch that they released Irelia, right? The Irelia, Malphite and Zillion, but it, uh, and they only had their two nerfs on two cards only. And then on the previous patch was only skins. So it was like free patch, right? It was the entire month without uh, uh, balancing on the game. So it was, the game got bored, right? Like in terms, People for playing, they didn't have nothing to do. Like it was always same decks to be play. People, of course, they try sometimes to try out other decks, but it's like they they don't reach to be the best. Like they will lose because there are some people that they want to be the number one on the ladder, so they play with the best decks, and it's like only two or three. But of course, Irelia really, and Azir is one of the best, but uh, there is always a way to fight against those decks because you, it, you need the other tier 1 deck to fight against that. So people were like, okay, we have to wait to uh, balance, to, to change the meta, right? And uh, so people were like, what to do? Uh, like some were trying decks, different decks, and others were like putting on a break of uh, Legend of Runeterra and play other games. So with this patch where people were like, okay, here comes a balancing uh, patch for the game. And people were like, come on. Let's see if they change the meta, right? New decks to be played, uh, new champions, and like it's not a huge patch in terms of balance. Like I said, they need to be aggressive in terms of balancing to change the meta. Uh, but it seems that what they sh are showing is that they don't care about that. It's what they say. So, card plates, you see a lot of conversation in the community later on the topic of life design. Players are passionate about it and we are passionate about it as well. We believe that life design is strong. It connects to our, one of our fundamental beliefs, which is that every player should be able to have access to all cards and all decks without spending money. That from as well as Tech unlocks our team to be able to make card plates without punishing players for past card and deck accusation choice. Okay. Ultimately, our goal is to make Legend of the most fun we can, but there is the problem, most fun we can. The problem is, if you are not doing balancing patch, the fun disappears. There is a mistake in there. You need all, like, they at least patch two in two weeks. You need every patch to be balancing. One to be super aggressive, and the other, like, not super aggressive again, but mediocre. You need always, because if you don't do a patch without balancing, the game uh, stales and people get bored. When making life design decisions, we don't focus on any single aspect. We use complex data models on card usage, region usage, win rate, deck list, performance versus specific decks, different formats, different ranks, win rates, parity, performance over time, etc. We also consider the complex model of how decks feel relative to the meta and we serve the community regularly to learn how play feel about cards, cards specific decks, archetypes, Meta game, elf game modes, cosmetics, future game content ideas, this list goes on. But the, another problem is like, if a guy that is on master, he knows how to play the game and he knows how to do with that deck. If they are using all this data, but if I'm playing with that deck that is tier 1, and I'm playing on, uh, uh, imagine, bronze, like, I don't understand the game, I don't understand meta, and that deck will have a lose uh, uh, in terms of win rate will decrease always. So is this a good way to see how the win rate of that deck is? No, you can't do that. You need to pay attention more. It's like you can't do, see through all the ranks. You need to see 
on the high ranks Diamond and Master because there is where players know how to use those decks, those powerful decks. It's where you have to see not oh let's see all the ranks to see how they are behaving in there. No, because are, there are people that don't know how to use that deck and they will lose. So that data will not be precise. And then it's like in terms of feedback of the place, but what feedback from the place? The streamers? Of course they will say for their own decks that they want. That's the problem. The feedback, where are you getting those feedback? Because on Reddit there is nothing. I never receive an email say give feedback of the cards. So where are you getting that, that feedback? We try to force our change to be as target as possible and avoid collateral damage or unintended consequences to decks that we don't want to affect. Making a small amount of change can have large impacts on the metagame. So there you go, a false, uh, false thing. Making a small amount of change can have large impacts on the metagame. That's false. You have to be aggressive to change the meta because if you are doing small amount of change, the meta gets stale. You saw like. Uh, when it was Ezreal uh, Karma in the beginning, they were doing small change and the Ezreal and Karma was super powerful deck. They needed to be aggressive to change. So immediately in here they don't know what they are saying. It's like uh, safe random things to, to hurry up. We also try to let community find new ways to evolve playstyle meta game change over time without life side card change. Again, that's another lie. People try all the different decks, they lose and they get rid of the, that deck and they go for the best decks. One of the amazing things about the card game genre is the ability to come to us to explore and discover new strategies that can dramatically shift the meta over time without any card change. Another lie. You, if you see streamers, they try other decks, they lose, they mute, uh, delete that deck and they go for the best deck to increase their, their win rate and in terms of rank 2. It's easy to understand. But oh well, it's right, they try to always say things that is not correct, that are, uh, uh, it's always false what they say, but oh well. The bread process is fun and we don't uh, want to artificially disrupt that process by implementing life design card chase too quick or too often. Say that they only care about money already and that you're not going to see a, lo a lot of uh, balancing in the next patch like maybe you have to wait for weeks to see a, a balancing patch like that because the problem is doing balancing card games is not easy that's that's uh, the proof you, are, you can see in all the other card games it's not easy but that's why Earthstone, Magic the Guide, they don't release patch after patch they take like one month and then they release because like that they have a way to balancing in here, they are doing like League of Legends, two in two weeks patch. And so in terms of data, they can't receive that data immediately. And then it's like, okay, your game is free to play, like you don't need to buy cards. Like they say, you don't need to buy cards. You, are, you can obtain them for free, right? You can use the wild card to make a card like that, okay. But your game will lose money during that time. Because not a lot of people will buy cosmetics like that. And we see that they start now to make uh, uh, the skins for the game, like for cards, right? And you saw people complain the price. So why you went after skins? Why not doing balancing? When people pass one month without balancing and people stop playing the game because they were waiting for a patch. Because they don't know what to do. Right, it's like I don't understand. Like uh, they uh, like is uh, it's right. Like they don't understand what they need to do for a game. Like they go after the money, and uh, people are like, okay, let's let me play after a patch. They play like during two weeks. They don't see uh, balancing, and they stop during one month. What happened last uh, last month? They stop it with because they tried to make other decks and they weren't working. And in here. They are lying to the to the player, say, oh, people have, uh, they find always ways to have fun with different decks. No, because people start to lose a lot. They, in terms of rank, they start to decrease and they delete the deck and they go for the best. You can even see the tournaments. The decks are always the same. Everyone has the same deck. Why? Because it's the way that you need to win. Of course, there is the tier one decks and tier two for the 
they bring like a lot of decks for the tournament and always the tier 1 decks are banned like you could see if you saw the Europe, Europe Masters you saw that like a lot of them had the trash with Nasus like everyone had the same decks so where is the variety of decks? This is what shows that they don't understand card games and it's the problem or there are times when it's clear that shades are on the side to ensure the experience is fun and exciting they are mouth are both a clear examples that they need lights and attention of course they are trash uh, it's an easy decision to make because so many of our inputs into decision making process clearly indicate that the Lee, Mouth and their primary decks are not meet our standard Airel and Z are not so obvious because they are different inputs that go to each other it, may, it takes time to gather information to make the decision no, in here everyone says Irel and Azir is too powerful because they are a fast deck because you are fast but the problem what they are saying in here is because there is people that use that deck on bronze, iron like that and uh, they don't understand very well what to do with the deck they see that in terms of real rate is not higher because there are people on lower ranks that are playing with that deck that's the issue they are watching lower ranks instead of watching top ranks master and diamond that's the issue uh, Information makes a decision. In the first weeks for of Guardians of the Ancient, we have seen Iran deck as it deck rise and fall in popularity and efficacy. No, that's lie. Over time, our decision on whether or not we should make balance change on deck has shifted. We love the play pattern of Iran as it, as well as play dance. We have learned that a ton of players love it too, and we want to keep the feel of deck intact. However, our most recent information against the deck is just too powerful. And so I'm making two very targeted change. We hope to maintain the fun while opening our opportunities to opportunities to, for other strategies and to reduce the frustration of playing against it. We will continue to monitor the meta games as it evolves and will consider more change, change going forward if necessary. We are also learning and improve the Runeterra and our process. Sometimes we make mistakes, but we always do our best to listen to all of our players and improve along the way where they listen to our players who knows we are on this journey together and the community's passion and love for the game inspires us to do better you know thanks for seeing you back <laughs> over the last few weeks what feedback so you are seeing streamers is what it is that's a shame because some streamers will want for their decks that they like more so here we go champion stalia so in level one the base stats go for three five so more health and more damage and uh, for level 2 it goes for 4-6 but uh, the problem the problem in here is not okay improve uh, it gets more stronger right uh they immediately it shows there is some mistakes in here because it says level 2 it was a 3-5 and goes to 4-6 and in here they didn't even give the effort to change showing what it's going to be but well uh, but it's going to force it. Okay, gonna have more damage and more de more health. Okay, that's good. Like that, she do is not wrecked immediately. But the problem is how she evolves. That's the problem. How she needs to evolve like that, and then the deck she needs to be strong. That's the problem. It's not only the champion that needs change. It's other cards too. And then we have the mouth at level one that they are going to change is the level up level up requirement so you needed like a 12 plus mana of landmarks and now it's going to be you have some 10 plus mana of landmarks okay decrease in terms of mana that you need instead of 12 plus it 10 plus okay good you need less mana from landmarks to use but the problem is it's fucking landmarks nobody plays landmarks on the fucking game because there is landmarks that are bad almost all landmarks are bad so why again it's a good change but still is not very good because people not gonna play landmarks you need to do some buffs on landmarks that's the issue i understand that they okay level of required by go like this but people won't play because first the card is expensive it's a seven costs and then is you need landmarks and landmarks will occupy occupy sp space for you, so people don't want. So it's like I don't understand. 
The people from behind from Bouncy Team on right is like, Phew. Then falls and spells, so this is going to cost 5 and the base stats is going to be for free. Okay, so it costs more and put more damage. Because a lot of people were playing this card immediately. Uh, because what she has, when you play the card, you have the blade dance immediately. But they increase the, the cost, okay, and the damage more. Like that is fair. And then we have Inspiring Marshall, the cost going to 6, and the base stats goes to 4 5. So uh, cost more and decrease the health, okay. It's not hard to defeat at the same time because he's trying to do something on the Irelia Azir deck. But the problem, okay, I understand this card, why it is, because when you, you play the card and then when you play another, he buffs the card, right? But it's like, uh, it's not this card that's gonna be, do the change. It's not this. Then, last patch 2.9 brings new champion powers and more to Lab Legends. New starting champs added, okay, for Lab Legends. Uh, instead of how, having all those champions always, so you're gonna have different ones. So it's gonna be Irelia, Zillion, Malfit, Lissandra, and Fizz. I've been added to the starting champion rooster, get a Malfit card back for completing a run with each of them. Okay, like, okay, we add those amount of cards, the champions that we had on Lab of Flash, so they are adding more. That's always cool, like that you have more things to do with that, instead of like, okay, let me go for the hard and then challenging like that. You have more card, more champions to play with. Okay, that's good. And um, if you complete like the the normal one, you receive a mouth with card back. New support champions added. Shejuan, Leon, Yasuo, and Victor have been added as draftable champions during a run. Okay, new champions to be on the draftable because we didn't add always. It all it was always the same ones. Was Sorak and like the CV like that in there. More powers, 18 new powers have been added, 10 common, 5 rare and 3 epic, okay. That is good. Talia Hawks now, hopefully, Talia deck has been updated, okay, because Talia deck was super bad on Live of Legends, so people could, uh, it was hard to win a run with uh, her deck. We are making a few changes to do your share spells as well. More deck consistency plays can now bring 0 2 decks with them run then 0 free, so they will always see any decks they bring as an option, okay? Queue players will be given a chance to add their teammate as a friend if they are solo queuing. Okay, that's always good. And then we have miscellaneous, as an awesome patch 2.70, patch notes will releasing of patch 2.9.0, cross shard friend challenge will no longer be supported, okay? As law continues to grow, we are beginning to run up against challenge caused by outdate tech, okay? After, uh, overtime has been adjusted for best of free match, while in overtime players now have approximately 25 seconds to complete their turn, okay, because it was taking some time, it's always good. And then of course we have bug fix, you can see a lot of bug fix, of course when a patch comes, always comes with bugs, but at the same time they are fixing those bugs, it's always good that they fix. But overall, again, they say that they're gonna balance the game, like... What I can say, in terms of policy, is not nothing great. Like, okay, they are trying to see if people play with Talia and Malfit. It's like, with Malfit, nobody gonna play. I can say immediately, if they don't balance, they don't buff landmarks, nobody will play landmarks, first of all. So nobody will play with Malfit. The order for Malfit, I think they need to reduce the cost to 6 at least. Talia, okay, huge buff for her, okay, I understand, but again, like, the cards that she needs and the combinations like that is not gonna be easy for her, and to evolve is not easy at the same time, so it's like, I understand it's like they are trying to promote more players to play with uh, landmarks, but people to play with certain thing, that thing needs to be, get buffed, so landmarks were nerfed. Like uh, Grand Plaza was a lot of played and got nerfed. The that veil that was with uh, Aphelius was very good and got nerfed. And now you want people to play landmarks? Nobody gonna play because your landmark sucks. So if you want people to play with 
Thalia Malfit, you need to buff landmarks like that people with those buffs will play with Thalia and Malfit. Easy, it's easy to understand how. But oh well, some devs are a little slow to understand now. Then I understand that buff to that card of um, that is for deck of Azir Irelia, I understand why. And for the other card that is for Irelia Z2, I understand why, but that's those changes will not make that deck to be uh, hard to play because the the passive the passive that the the text the what they do is always very good to it helps a lot for decks and uh, that's why those cards are getting nerfed bec but people will still play with Z because nothing only should cards doesn't affect the rest. Simply what they're gonna do, people are gonna do is like, okay, these cards cannot be played immediately. So I'm gonna be slow playing with that card, but I will play with others. Um, so what I will say for right is just be aggressive. Don't be pussies, don't do this, don't come with these tags, huge tags call, uh, talking about card plates. This is a waste of time that you are doing to write this. Don't lie in terms of a lot of things. Because if you want people to play and to have, continue to have fun with the game, you need to be aggressive in the nerfs and buffs. Because you can see that there is ton of cards nobody plays. You have Ekarim, nobody plays with him. You have Yasu that nobody plays with him. You have um, Malfit, of course, nobody plays with him, but I don't want to say that. Uh, but you have Lulu that nobody plays with her and others. Why? Because they suck. So why you don't be aggressive and nerf the cards that are being played and buff the cards that are not being played? Like that, you have different decks being played every month. Why you don't do that? Why you do this shit uh, balancing that doesn't make that not gonna make a difference and people will continue to be playing with. Uh, Trash Nasus, Irelia Zir, and others. It's like this balance is not gonna change nothing on the game. It's kind of a shame. It's kind of a shame, but it it starts to be the reality of the game. It starts to be the reality of the game because when the game come out and they say that people will not buy, not need to buy cards. I say the game in the beginning people will play, but then they will start bleeding and they go after the money. And we saw skins. I said that they are not going to be doing balancing a lot of balance. They're going to be pussies and not doing being aggressive on balancing because they don't know what to do. And it's what I'm seeing. Everything that I start to say since the beginning of the game, it's happening already. It's happening because it is. It is. It is happening because they don't know what to do more. Uh, yeah, it's kind of shit, but. People are getting are starting to get boring with the game because no new decks are appearing to play. Uh, uh, the balancing is being slow as fuck. Uh, I don't know. It's like they say feedback that players are giving. Who the fuck is giving feedback to you? Because if someone is giving feedback to you, is giving the wrong feedback. Is what I have to say. So I hope you guys are here. The patch notes for Legend of Terra. Uh, I hope next patch in two weeks they do something good for the game because it's getting it's getting boring. It's getting boring. Oh, hope you guys enjoy and see you guys in two weeks for a new patch for Legend of Runeterra.